Okay, we are back. Okay, so... Um, with that being said, we have one more thing to do, one more quest to do. More donut. Welcome back. I perchance here to see Cryo. I'll go and she has a task for which desires your assistance. Yes. Then I shall fetch her at once. Pray a moment. Alexis, thanks for coming. If you're available, I'd like you to know how to assist me in the task I had mentioned. For you to call on Lexus, I assume the task is somewhat more exciting than the sorting through paperwork, which I am pleased to add I have finished. With Lexus today, so am I. Our venture to the bounty has only served to whet my appetite for field work. Not to oversell things, but I suspect you won't be disappointed ere I divulge the details, however, permit me to provide some background. As you know, our organization, the Students of Baldessian, was founded by my grandfather, Galif. Our stated mission was to uncover the mysteries of Heidelin and interpret her will, particularly through the study of her gift to us. We've since learned the whole truth, and it might be said that we've fulfilled our mission, but our work is far from over. In the course of our endeavors, we also sought to devise countermeasures against the threats that have come to light. Our involvement with the Warring Triad is such an example. It is my belief, continuing to seek out an unknown, dealing with threats, we best carry on the student's mission. We best honor those we've lost in the Isle of Val was destroyed. Forgive me, I didn't mean to darken the mood. I'm saying all this. I simply wanted to clarify our organization's purpose for a new age. In line with said purpose, I've been reviewing our new requests. One in particular jumped out at me. It comes from none other than Rambrose, the son of the Saint Connick. Truly, has something happened to Mordona then? So it would seem he wishes to entrust the matter to us. With his missive and sparse on details, he writes that it, along, it lies beyond the sun's expertise. Uncharted territory are the exact words he used. I'd like you to meet with Ambrose and conduct a preliminary survey. What say you? Wonderful. When you're ready, pray make way to Revenant's Toll. I shall let Lauren Burroughs know that you, to receive you there. I must remain oversee operations here, but I should transpire that more hands are needed. Don't hesitate to send word. Well, there's no time like the present. I could go ahead in Revenant's Toll and make ready and be on my way. All this skill just being tossed at the ether. The ether gnomes. There's a little snake. Ah, I want a little snake. <clears throat> there you are, Luxus. Would seem early. Apologies for the wait. Rambrose, what a pleasure to see you again. How have you been? Mr. all mine, my friend. I've been well, and it gladdens me to see that you are, too. Now, I know you have many de demands upon your time, so I shall explain the particulars of your request once more. Recently, an explorer came to us who claimed to have discovered the Phantom Realm. Phantom Realms? So that's what you meant by Uncharted Territory. Not familiar, perhaps unsurprising, given the lesser-known legend. The legend holds that across Eorzea, there exits a realm 
which appears as a mirage that visible from distance it fades away as one draws near that is uh, featured in myths since ancient times the realm's existence could not be proven In spite of this fueled by rumors, the occasional sighting of the myth has persisted and continues to capture the hearts and minds of explorers. <clears throat> then yourself reach out to us. Is it real then? When the first explorer in question approached us, we doubted him, but we couldn't have evidence of our senses. Nay, the realm is real, as you will soon see for yourselves. Gods, the part of me still struggles to believe it. We have no reason to doubt you. Suffice to say, we're eager to see the realm, too. Okay. Seek out the explorer when Derek and the realm of us, and I should be willing to serve as your guide. Ask him to accompany me here, but he preferred to continue exploring on his own. Somewhere near the banks of Silver Tier Lake, I expect. Good, thanks, Ron Burrows. Come on, let's split up and look for our explorer. Waffles Jr. You remind me of Waffles Jr. Good sir. In case you're entertaining the thought, looks like the Opopo is in our explorer. I have the man in question here with me. Uh, yes, but he reminds me of my Waffles Jr. Graha. And we were having a moment. No, Waffles Jr. Oh, okay, you got your own Waffles Jr. Very well. I understand. Oh, no! Best quest ever! Why are they writing stories after my bond with animals and Archmages and everything? Derek, the one who discovered the Phantom Room, my apologies for making you search for me. Oh, Popo. You're about the creature, are you? I found him injured during one of my journeys and tended to him. Since then, he has taken the following to me around. Inquisitive about otherwise harmless, so pray him no mind. Hmm, you're the one who delivered our star from doom, are you not? What well, good fortune is that the one capable as you should lend her aid? Clear organization has yet to accept the commission. Before we make a decision, could you give us a preliminary survey? Will you guide us to the Phantom Realm? The Phantom Realm. Of course, to show the entrance at once. Gate is long dreamed by explorers. What are you... Entrance, I told you. Impressive, isn't it? The gate manifested so too did its magic, allowing one of us... Allowing one to thus walk upon water. This is just like Irianje's spell. Except... Not as effective. Someone can see the means to do this at will. An intriguing individual. Perfectly safe, I assure you. Come. Ah, I will totally follow Waffles Jr. Waffles Jr. Where? Monkey lore. Hmm. 
Really, an Opopo? Really? Come on, Square Enix. You gotta be watching somebody. Well, I mean, are you coming or are you not? As a 12, you can truly walk here. What magic is this? By what means is it perpetuated? <laughs> Forgive me, let us continue on. the phantom realm Whoa! <laughs> The entrance would lie over Silverture Lake. Something out of the ordinary with the environment, the sights, the sounds, the smells, all appears they should in nature. That is to say, this place has no illusion. Bid you welcome to the navel of the Phantom Realm and follow us. Wallace, you say this place is called. In the name of my own conception, I must confess. I felt we needed to call something to call it by. Lest you wonder, the word means navel in ancient tongue, and allusion to Morjona's location in the heart of Eldenard. As you can see, the man made structures and place where the peers were kept, yet there is not a single soul in evidence. It is my hope that you will let me shed light upon this realm to learn who created it and to what end. I would also like to know why it's revealed to itself now. What is simply the chance that it's been kept hidden or something more? In any case, let's begin by taking a look around. The crystal tower is all the way over there. The far, far off. And this is supposed to be the crystal tower. The clouds look difficult to share, but you're sure in the sky over above Tier Lake. The isle could be seen from the outside, however. But what's that over there? Also, look.
Wait a second. Sunny Mime is in here, but he's saying you cannot say, but the motifs rot and its base appear familiar. Yes, they certainly do. Then I might take a look at your laser. The Popo seems quite at home when she say, How many times did Derek come here? I wonder. Number of structures can be seen in this area. What purpose could they possibly serve? The architecture is unlike anything I've seen in Aorcia. Truly exquisite stuff. Just looking around, have you? What are your impressions? I've had only a cursory glance, but this truly is a mysterious place. The gleaming spire rising over the clouds is most certainly the Crystal Tower. And judging by its aspects, we are a considerable distance above Silvertear Lake, which would suggest the gate we entered is a teleporter. However, if this isle is what it appears to lie, then it couldn't have escaped the battle silver tier skies unscathed. Which I do say we are in Mordona, yet we are not. This is as if we're displaced from our world, if only slightly. Displaced in an apt way to put it. What else do you ought notice? Aye, the motifs upon yonder structure is unlikely the marks of the twelve. By which I posit this place is created by to be a place of worship? But by whom? I cannot think of any possible built such grand premises. Never in my magical conceal it. At least not in the wake of the Battle of Silvertear Skies. I this is place is mysterious indeed. Well, it seems not but one solution for our ignorance, a thorough investigation. But this will require more manpower supplies, among other things. With that, your permission, of course, we will confer with our representative, Cryo, and make sure necessary arrangements are for a formal investigation. If that's what needs to be done to commence your work in earnest, then by all means. But without further ado, let us return to Charlene. Hold, mortals. Is it the Apopo? Uh, oh, maybe not. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thals balls. Orbs. You profane the secret womb with your very presence and must answer for your reverence.
They act like we're afraid. I'm Byregard, the builder. Byregard and the Twelve are real. And no doubt we must not slack and born of mortal faith. Nay, we Twelve are divine, divinity is true. And in Highland's absence, we are Star's rightful rulers. It's will. <laughs> Just pull out the Moogle book. Uh uh, we're gonna bop you now. Let's see, watch the mankind. And determine you, champion of Highland, possess a threat to our ascension. Uh, because you're not. Okay, whatever, lady. Foolish to wander into our realm. We destroy you with ease here now as divinities, but we must demonstrate grace and forbearance. I'm about to snap this book on your nose. There's but one true path. We must weigh this mortal's worth. Here, let there be a trial. While mortals are invariably destroyed, it would at least provide us with a diversion. What? You suddenly appear and expect us to simply comply with your whims? Purchase if you wish, but mortal logic means not to us gods. You abide by our laws. The gateway to our sanctum lies open. Show the strength of mankind. Show us the honor of mankind. Just the spirit of mankind. It would remain the master of his own destiny that assemble your comrades and come, then prove your worth. I've been hosting my previous forays. Nothing like that has ever happened. I've never encountered a single soul, and certainly not gods. And by their own mission, they mean they took over the star. What are we to do? The situation has indeed taken an unexpected turn, but must try to think clearly. Twelve have long been revered and worshipped in Aeosia, and myths about them abound. But to my knowledge, they have never thus appeared so openly before the people. Those being to suddenly reveal themselves just when we're here, claim supremacy of the star and challenge Lux to a trial. Too much of this feels odd, and it gives me pause. Fair enough, yet it stands that we can't dismiss the threat either. Whatever they are, if they're issuing a challenge, then challenge accepted. Grand Van Belsar once said that the Twelve, too, were simply primals. This is turning out to be another strange affair. It's true that even Highland and Zodiac are primals, and we cannot discount the possibility, but we know too little to draw conclusions. In any event, sinking dominion over the stars, they say, what happens here has far-reaching implications. At that end, I believe we should take action. Suffice it to say you are with me? Students about this team officially tend to the situation. I, and of course, studying the star's mysteries, we have undertaken to deal with any threats that may arise. This is no different. Alright, let us deliberate a course of action. Derek, you not know these things in the sanctum. <sighs> Aye, there are domains in the Phantom Realm that lie beyond each gate. I've explored them all. 
Perhaps due to etheric instability, there are times when one can enter and one orderly cannot, but it would seem that when the way has been open for us. But I encountered no gods in my previous raids, it's not enough to know my way around. I am but a humble explorer, but cannot contend with gods, but if you would be willing to protect me, I will serve as your guard. Some of your comrades, Vargot bade us. As long as I know you are, we did a little less about our foes, neither the strength of their true nature, it should be recklessly to face them by ourselves. Hey, Kabane. Nay, we must choose an approach that affords us the best chance of victory. To this end, I shall work behind the scenes and let you set forth to answer the gods' challenge. I will do what I can in my capacity as a student. For one, I would behoove us to arm ourselves with knowledge about the Twelve, and I shall begin a prizing cry of the situation. By thus utilizing our resources to the fullest, we shall overcome whatever trials await. Aglaya! Entering Aglaya. What did what did you hear? <laughs> Is it true what I heard? I don't know what you heard, Aglaya. What did you hear? What am I what am I hearing? Are they? I I don't know. I've been a Lalafell forever. Is this true? I don't know. That's weird. I've never heard of that. Why? Also, I know that the the lights are low because you can't see anything behind me. But it's late in the afternoon for me, so I've never heard of that. Wow, that's a that's a chunky chunky castle. Oh, and then all of a sudden everybody's like right behind you. It's so funny. Oh, this place looks so cool. I love, love, love the music. I don't believe that at all. Very, very funny. Come, children of man. I don't believe that for one moment. Okay. I'm 
I'm gonna spread off myself deployment tactics. I need to watch myself. Since this is my first time, I really don't know what to expect. We're gonna put shield up for everybody. Let's give ourselves some, a running buff, just in case. Oh, whoa, whoa, okay. Shield's going down. What are they doing? Focus heal. Fairy heal on uh, our straggler there. Oh, are they going forward? Ah, I see. It shifts and then it AoEs. Got it. Off myself. Okay. <laughs> I don't think that that's the case. I don't think they'd do that. I see. Sides are going to come off, then they're going to shift, right? shift is going to happen on that side. We're going to move up. And we'll bounce the uh, deployment tactics off myself. I should hit everybody. gonna shift again, right? Okay. I'd never give up Lux as a Lala fell, so I hope not. I would hope not. Pass. Pass. This is my first time, so I don't know what's gonna happen. Like, I don't recognize any of this 
stuff. So, we'll see. Focus on DPSing for a while, put my fairy on heal. It's gonna be a cross up. So probably. Oh, I knew it. guarantee so uh did I get the heal off bolt from blue so probably above my head okay This is pretty cool. Right, okay. No damage on my team. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's crazy. Off myself. Shield up. Extended. Good. Shield down. The left side. So we're going to stay on this right side. Is probably going to time out here in a little bit. Right. Very AoE shield up. Shield down.
Okay, heal up. Free shield. Very on, thank you. Buff on myself. Spread shield. Shield spread. Shield up. Pull down. Okay. Speed up. Here we go. Hit by the tank. I saw it coming. I couldn't do anything about it. Get people up. Hard res one. Dang it, of course, of course, of course. Okay. Okay, got the second res. Yes, please. Pass. The reset's almost over, so I'm just taking whatever I can. It's not to run it over again. It's out, then in, I guess. Then in, I guess. Shields are down. I don't need an X cog. I guess I can.
why I'm like super focused right now. Got it. Here. Back here. Move everybody else, speed him up. Boy, we heal up. Shield down. Buff up. Fairy shields up. One more to top off the shield. Tank X Cog. Myself. We're gonna deployment tactics. Should give everybody a shield. X Hog on Amanda. Shield up. Get some movement up. Okay, cool. Nope, pass. Nope, pass. I said he's up ahead. Could there be people here? Uh, I don't think there would be people. Judge, 
Shields out. Focus. Good call on my part. Looks like a push out. Okay. Till above is below. Get that up on Amanda. X cog. Some movement up just in case. Shield. Heal. down okay it's called uh, below on me for tactics okay I gotcha I gotcha this way Feel down. Fairy shield. I got it, I got it, I get it, I get it. Go to the side that has that thing. Oh! Yeah, no. Let's get some movement up here. Okay, there's a marker on the side, there's one in the center, so they're probably gonna fire. So we're gonna go here first. Okay. It's a fire, very dangerous. Oh, I'm just gonna push back, right? Yep. 
Amanda, X Cog, you, Balance. Please tell me that was enough weight. Shield out. Let's go again, Amanda. Above is below. Okay. Movement up. Other side, I believe. Nice. Well, well. Aglaya, <laughs> Aglaya complete. Wow. You know what? Spooky is a really good partner. Pass. I can't because I already passed on that. Pass, pass. Please, minion. Nope. Null card, null card, null card.
Oh, at least I got, you know, I got some stuff, I guess. Uh, armory. That's my hands? Or... We'll get, we'll get rid of, uh... Jeez, there's, like, not very many things I want to get rid of. I guess these Shire Perceptor gloves. What do I have on right now? Ghost Baroque Arms of Healing. Oh, you know what? That actually looks pretty cool. What? I sort of like this. They actually look pretty cool. With my with my gloves on, and then if I did like gold, I don't know. Maybe not. I'll think about it. Yes, cleaning up on the comms though. Oh, Cryo! You're safe, thank goodness. I rushed here as soon as I heard from the tidings from Raha. Is it true? Beings claiming to be the Twelve have appeared. Yep, and we just knocked out four of them, so that leaves eight more. Did you them all? Incredible. I have no doubt you'd succeed, but I'm impressed no less for it. Seldom have I felt such exhilaration. Frogger. I want to see which one I have the the birth month with because you know you pick your people at the beginning. Mine's Alphic, the one with the little wheel. Anyway, to say that they would come, we'd put such forth on Act of Men. I must say, Birgot, you played the villain's role to perfection. By our God, probably. Yeah. Uh, come now, Master. I merely did what was necessary to compel the mortals to confront us. Still, it pained me to speak to our beloved children so unkindly. What do you say, Zayma? You certainly seem happy enough to fight them. You don't forget the true purpose of the trial, I hope. Well, I couldn't help but be excited. It, it, do not tell me you felt differently. Consider yourselves fortunate, children. Tis rare indeed to see Nathal in such high spirits. What just happened? Did you say you defeated them? Did they manage to flee or perhaps were resummoned? Put your weapons. Put up your weapons. They have not to fear from us. Rest assured, we are not summoned beings. We do not drain the land of ether, nor do we make man into our thrall. The miggle noises. But what of gods who are summoned during the calamity? The ones who Master Luis Wall called forth to protect the realm. That was not us, but a primal born of your fervent prayers for salvation. Indeed, the worst calamity was averted and the realm restored in its aftermath as a direct testament to the power of your hopes. Wait, what? Do you truly intend to rule this world? Why choose to appear before us now? That's the most important question of those three questions. This has been a harbor hope, so too do we gods. We realize our aspirations, it is essential that we do battle with you. Thus did I falsely claim we sought to rule the world. It was deceitful conduct worthy of a divinity, and I must apologize not only for that, but for using my powers to do harm besides.
And these types of ears, won't you tell us what they are? We cannot. If you wish to know the truth, you must discover it for yourselves. It is not easy to move forward when there's seemingly no destination, but if you press on, you'll eventually arrive at the answers you seek. Uh, you will understand why we hold our peace, and far more besides, you will learn the very truth of our existence. Go forth, mortals, and seek knowledge of us, and when the time is right, we shall meet again in this place. As the fearing from your battle of the twelve were shocking enough to have them appear before my very eyes, suffice it to say it's been an interesting day. While much remains a chatted mystery, at least they have some open to reason, and considering our next step, I should very much like to hear your detailed account of them. Right after I have a word with our client, that is. Please give me a moment to introduce myself, then we can review the situation. Greetings, I am Kryle of the Students of Valdesian. Do I have the pleasure of addressing Derek, the explorer who sought aid in investigating this place? Ah, oh, Waffles Jr. I am Derek, and this here is the baby Opopo. No, that's Waffles Jr. It's 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 Luxus Archimedes lore. Yes, I can see that. Doesn't it have a name? Waffles, yes. None that I know of, nor would I presume to bestow one, for that would be condescending. I see, that's very considerate of you. So, I understand that you explored various phantom realms with Derek. Will you recount me the experience? Sure, so all four came out, and suddenly you went to this place, it was all floating with pillars. But the gods test you sorely, you did not see any malicious intent. As the bar got set, they went to do battle with us, but seemed not that necessarily wished to cause us harm. Though much and more be perplexed, it's mayhaps it's safe to assume that they are not primals. As you may recall, Living Way once told us the art of summoning as taught by the Asians incorporates a fervent desire to assimilate others into one's belief. Thus too, the resultant primals seek to enthrall worshippers, who in turn return seek to grow their ranks. But these beings appear to harbor no such desire. If they are primals, then they are unlike those that have been summoned in recent memory. We might suppose that they are creating an antiquity in the manner to hide a limb, but there's no way to prove it. Who could they possibly be, and why do they desire a battle with man? Even of your little ears, yeah, you know precious little, the true identities of the Twelve, for instance. Do y'all recall what Emmett Selk said about all the spoilers? <laughs> all the stuff he spoiled for us? Emmett Selk did say that, didn't he? By which we assume he knew the truth and challenged you to seek it out, too. Suffice it to say you'll do so, of course. Insofar as we can ascertain, this is a matter that has implications for the entire star. In light of this, the students have Baudessi and formally accept the commission to investigate the Phantom Realm and the beings who call themselves the Twelve. I'm pleased to hear that, thank you. Without further ado then, I will take a look around. There are a few things I'm curious about. Then with your permission, I'll take myself to around Aeorzea to investigate and worship the gods that we encountered. Alexis Derek, seeing as you've already seen this place, would you care to accompany me? Why do they always leave Cryo by herself? By all means, in which case... Did you stay here with Kryle? Yes! Waffles, stay! Like, I wouldn't leave a fair maiden alone. Oh, cook! Yes. Ah, uh, it's okay then. Good luck. Ah! Uh, best picture!
Harass uttered his observations with me. Keep your combined accounts in mind. I shall see what I can learn here. Book. So to explain my plan, it is believed the twelve were already worshipped during the third astral era when the empire flourished. Then come the fifth astral era. Those nations that fought in the war of the Magi each took one of the twelve as a garden deity. This practice has continued the present day of Eorzea with some notable regional differences. For instance, Escardians held Holone as absolute, while Charlene enjoyed a moderate relationship with Daliak, which is mine. By visiting various locations in Eorzea and learning about the Twelve as they are worshipped, I hope to identify similarities and differences between them and the beings they encountered. In so doing, I believe we draw closer to the truth of their identities. For our first destination, I propose we take ourselves to Ragnar's Reach, the place is holy ground for the worshippers of the Destroyer and promises to yield useful details. There you are, Lexus. This is served based on operations for your investigation into Omega, did it not? How delightful to be here together. Don't mind me making an observation, it seems you enjoy traveling with company. I do, it's something I've dreamed of for a long time. There's nothing like traveling with good friends. That's so. But of yourself, do you normally travel alone? I am I wondering how much you prefer to have solitude. Not that I avoid people or communities, mind you. As a matter of fact, I've been here before on the trail of the Phantom Realm. Hmm, now that I think on it. More often than not, those places with the Rome resemble site Rome sightings are known to occur in tradition of twelve worship. <laughs> then I dare say we're on the right track. As I'm sure you know, Ragus reaches home to the Temple of the, of the Fist, the ancient headquarters of Fist of Ralgar. Raised by the Mad King Theodoric, the temple lay abandoned before Alamegan resistance claimed it for its operations. While I doubt there's much literature that has survived over the years, the people here may possess some knowledge of the local faith. So let's split up and make inquiries, and reconvene here after we share findings. A storm of blood approaches, hells up in heaven's sweep, for one soul to fly the measure of his reach. The about time leads explains you to their meaning, that we must prepare ourselves for strife and sorrow that will inevitably come. Aww, what a walk down, like, memory lane, right? this guy, right? This looks as perchance a friend of yours. When he visited last, he shared tales of his journey. What amazing tales they were. If you have time, I'd like to hear both your stories. And investigating the worship of Ralgar, subject of religious texts, and like, can you say what can be found here? It's about all that's gone to, destroyed by the Empire, if not Mad King before that. 
And we haven't lost everything. The mighty image of the destroyer, the tales we share of the campfire, like legends of our nation's founding. We still have these things. They were a great source of comfort and strength to us in our darkest moments. So if you don't mind, if I could hear your stories. Lex is assured I'll have it in hand. Feel, feel, feel free to carry on as you'd like. Yes, if you have business here, please make it quick. I'm due to meet with someone any moment now. Forgive my delay. Why, well, business adventurer kindly escorted me to the Temple of the Fist? Are you studying monks too, perchance? I saw you ought to work together with me and my colleague here. A few things are finer than joining heads with the like minded folk. Actually, I just happened to come by to ask some questions myself. Researching the worship of the destroyer, you say? Why didn't you mention it sooner? Huh? This is a copy of Destructivity, a sculpture of the Fist of Ralgar. The original was one of the few texts that survived the temple's raising and is in safekeeping of one of the Professor Eric. I went to the trouble of having it, this made for my colleague, only for her to say she doesn't need it, but I'll offer it to you instead. Sai, lest you forget this is your passion, not mine. I'm simply assisting you as a favor. I thank you not to put us in danger. That danger is the crucible in which monks tempers body and mind. So sublime, monks. Okay, monk Xion. Xion monkey. Well, we best return to our work. Until next time, adventure. Bye, Marjorie. Okay, let's see. Lexus, what were you able to learn? Well, I attained a copy of this document that might prove useful. Here you go, Graha. Copy of all the scriptures, you say? A moment while I skim it over. Twenty years later. I see this chapter appears to be a record of the construction of the great image of Raga, written in a style that suggests folklore was committed to the parchment. When the deluge of the sixth emperor calamity threatened the Orisia, the ancestors of the Alamingans were guided to safety by a comet. Believing this is sent by Raga, they came to hold him in the highest. This much of a tale I had been familiar with. But according to the scripture, among those refugees who followed the comet, some claim to have caught sight of Raga himself. Their accounts are passed down through the centuries and worshippers of the destroyer pieced them together and gave shape to the Yonder statue. I must say it bears more than passing resemblance to the being we encountered. And were the mirror Raga primal, the explanation for the similarities would be simple. That is, the statue gives us rise to a unified interpretation of Ragar's appearance, which in turn leads form to the primal. However, this fails to account for what inspired the likeness in the first place. If the scripture is to believe, the sightings during the sixth umbrella calamity, yet for those witnesses are able to recognize Ragar, they would have needed to agree upon the idea of his appearance beforehand. 
if when we consider the history of the 12 warship that is already considered in the third astral era it would not be ridiculous to think that these divinities existed prior to that so the question is did these beings give rise to their respective face or are they primals born of them i thought we had made it clear we are not seven beings They'd show themselves in front of all these people? <gasps> oh yes! Spriggan slash Birdo! Since time immemorial, our domains have been scattered across Eorzea. As a matter of fact, one of those which she set foot nearby, it is not usual for mortals to glimpse us. That voice, could they be? Ah, oh, Fire God is a little spriggy. But he was a big guy, but now he's a little spriggy. Indeed, I am Byragot, and the hawk beside me is Ralgar. I shall elaborate upon my master's explanation. We thus disguise ourselves when we wish to observe the world without, for being seen in our true forms, or to violate our laws of conduct. Yet, though we simply disguise our sanctums, veiling them in illusions, rents are unknown to manifest when surrounding ether is unstable. In such a time, a gifted mortal chance be nearby, they may have inadvertently catch sight of us. Of course, during the number of calamity, etheric imbalance occurs on a star-wide scale, the ideal conditioning for seeing the phantom realm. Precisely how many times have we been seen, we ourselves know, not knowing, but I, this is a sound assumption to make. Well, by our God, believe such suffice a way of an apology for our deception, shall we? Indeed, that is how I keep the liberty to reveal. Fare you will, children of man. Aside from their reticence when it concerns their identity and objective, these divinities are certainly approachable. But they said is true, no warship can be traced back to their sightings, it would serve to explain one thing. According to my research in the field of comparative mythology, Ralga is often observed to bear many similarities with Ramu, assuming both are inspired by Ralga of the Phantom Realm. This divergence may attribute the differences in culture between man and sylph. So you believe they gave rise to the prevailing face of Eorzea? Given all available evidence, yes, I'm inclined to. Yet none of this explains their presence. How when beings of such power came to existence? Oh, it is you, Kryle. Has something happened? Truly, very well. I shall take care of it. Carl has recruited an acquaintance to aid in our investigation and an authority on mythology. We must go and receive her at the sunken temple of Khan, where she is currently conducting fieldwork. After a brief detour to prepare a little something. Conveniently, Thalin is home to countless adherents of Nadthal. While I attend to my business, I ask the two of you to make inquiries in Uldar. Very well. Excellent. I'll join you as soon as I'm able, by your leave. Bye, Graha. Yep. After all da we go. Zarekal, Mivalis, Sicarium is close to construction. Let us try the Arzaneth estuary. Yep. Off to Uda we go.
Oh, right. While we're out, we should have Waffles Jr. with us. Waffles Jr. Waffles? Waffles, where are you? Yes, sir. Come on, buddy. Hop on up. Why are you not gonna? Okay. Much better. Oh, right. But we're headed to the uh, ossuary, right? That would be the closest point is Amaturge. I should know this, but it's been so long since I've been to Ulda. Like, I don't come by Ulda as, as much as I should. Ah, uh, you're here. Of the Deific twins, Nathal, here worship Thal, and kept the realm of the dead and weighs the worth of men's souls. In contrast, Nath keeps the world of the living and oversees their financial fortunes. Their names can be born on many location in religious organizations, some extremely wealthy and powerful, exist to nurture faith in them. On the surface, it may seem the strange that the hub of commerce such as Ulda could be home to such spiritual people, but it's all actually quite logical when one considers their religion is, in essence, commerce. In any event, Hathal is truly an unusual divinity. What was originally held to be once him God became worshippers as twins. Worshipped as twins. Indeed, rather than two distinct entities which encountered was a single being possessed of two personalities. <laughs> uh, uh, oops, I don't think that should have been said. Did I miss you? Did you just say he encountered Nathal? See, this is why we can't go around Aeors here just saying whatever we want. Because here we are finding the foundations and fabric of all the things that are Aeorsia. And then we slip up in casual conversation just like, oh, this is common knowledge. And while his appearance differs from what the divinities worshipped, it cannot be denied that there are some striking similarities in their nature. Um, perhaps you should avoid talking about that here, you know. A lot of people don't know the truth exactly. Forgive me, this is hardly the place for such a conversation. Let us continue it elsewhere. Wow. It was curious to me to openly speak in front of our encounter with the divinity within the place he was worshipped. Hereon I shall exercise greater caution. I thank you for alerting me to my indiscretion as to keep it between us. Yeah, who else am I going to tell? Now then, to finish our conversation, as I mentioned that Nathal as a worship by men's appears somewhat different, there are undeniably similarities in their nature. I believe we may report this much to Grahatia. With that, our work is done. Rather, we're waiting the companion to arrive. Perhaps we seek him at the sunken temple? He mentioned needing to make a detour. Were we at top set now, we ought to be able to catch up with him. After all, we hardly know one another. Rather than loiter with unfamiliar persons, is it better to use our time productively, wouldn't you agree? Then let us head to the Sunken Temple of Karn. Righto. Uh, here. Uh, where are we going?
Oh, okay. Ah! My goodness, you found this woman collapsed, and I could not see no obvious injuries, but her attire, she appears to be some manner of scholar. Water, food in my bag, please. Lexus, may I trouble you to find your bag? I'll look out in the meantime. Uh, let's see. Where would I lose my bag? I always like the piano in this area. Oh, look. Okay, well, we're gonna take the water to her at least. You know, last thing we need is a monster to be like lurking over us. Not enough food, I need food. Oh my goodness, what? I have not had dried meat, tough as leather. Do you have anything easier to consume? Um. Oh, Graha does. I'm sure he does. Lexus Derek, what are you doing here? Actually, that can wait. I can see from dying from like not even water, but I mean, anyway. I brought you Arkham loaf and coffee made sweet and creamy just as you like it. Wait, what? You need water, it, not a snack and coffee. I'm reborn, washed down with sweet beverage, and the life giving nutrients of Archon Loaf permeate my being head to toe. Thank you, Cat Changer. Whatever preferred source of substance, you're truly a godsend. Oh, it's you, Raha. What brings you here? I don't recall mentioning my field work. Is it research for the Bella Dian's worship of Zayma, you see? Haven't you heard from Cryo? The students are presently investigating this world. We would prevail upon your expertise. May I introduce Snowgam? Expert mythologist. She's a collaborator with the students, like many a Shalarian scholar, is passionate about her endeavors to the point of forgetting to eat. Seeing as how she's recovered, may I ask two of you to tell her about the Phantom Realm? So, we found a whole bunch of old people. There's about 12 of them. We met four of them, and apparently they govern what is our future faith of Eorzea, and now we're researching. The 12 abide in the Phantom Realm, and you exchange not only words with them, but blows besides? Incredible. And your description of the domains, a thunderous tower in one, a sweltering city in another, as precisely as heavens of lightning and fire are depicted in legend. In ancient time, worshippers of the Twelve believe that there exist seven heavens and seven hells. Aetherology has established that departed souls return to the Aetherial Sea. But it seems as those after, uh, afterlife domains were more than just inventions of mortal imagination. As a pursuer of myths, I must say this feels somewhat anticlimactic to suddenly have these revelations given to me. But more than that, I'm dying to know more. Which is to say, please allow me to join you on your investigation. Ahem, we would of course welcome your presence without further ado. Let us help to uh, head to M. Follows and Cryo awaits us there. I like her hair. Just saying. You you have a lot of rogue characters, but often, especially the girl rose, aside from Moonbrita, you often try to make them like all frumpy and like sort of nice to make them make, you know, not so frumpy. Alrighty. Uh, if I recall this way.
Cryo, we're back. And then we found her and she was almost dead, but we shoved an Archon Loaf in her. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome, Snow GM. I'm glad that you can join us. So, Gaim, probably. Snow Gaim? Snow Gaim? Wow, how, uh, how delightful to see you again. I understand you've been doing a fine job leading the students. And I must say, what a lovely place this is. At a glance, this appears to be the highest of the heavens of legend, the seventh heaven. Oh, and those are the symbols respecting the other heavens. I take it those are the respective gateways. Should I pay them all a visit? First, no guidance benefit. Let us review what we've learned so far and then deliberate the next step. So it all began when this adventure and this Opopo waffles found the entrance to... And so here we are after we've brought you here and that should sum it all about up. The gods reappeared before us in Rogger's Reach and though they were disguised as unassuming creatures, their laws forbid them to showing their true forms outside their realm. Yet in the event of ambient aether becomes unstable, such during an ember calamity, it is possible for the realm and indeed the gods themselves to be glimpsed by mortals. And such sightings we believe have given rise to the various faiths pr practiced throughout Eorzea. As we confirmed in Ulda, the Nathal worship people and the Nathal we can encounter to have more similarities than they do differences. In the course of exploring and follows, two things caught my attention. First gate, which is in the in lies in the innermost area. If the other six gates lead to elementally aspected heaven, then we stand in the seventh heaven, as Snow GM says. What then lies beyond the last gate? This second is the monument. It harbors some ma manner of magic unlike anything I've seen before. I'll endeavor to decipher it, but it'll take time. Divinities of existence since time immemorial who abide in domains resembling the heavens of legend when they choose to reveal themselves to mortals seeking battle? Unless they favor us more of their secrets, it would seem that this monument holds the key to solving this mystery. Indeed, much more yet lies beyond our understanding, but we'll keep chasing through the truth. As I'm sure you'll agree, though, this is tiring work both mentally and physically. We need to pace ourselves. To which end, I might suggest that we return to Revenant's Toll and have a rest before we embark on the next stage of our investigation? I'm staying behind talking to the monkey. And the monkey's like, yeah, let's go. Like, because I wasn't facing him, I was turned to the... Anyway, that's really funny. Whoa. Yes, food. So rarely do I get to simply chat with colleagues. I had fairly forgotten what it felt like. Indeed, it's quite fitting that we should be doing it here at the seventh heaven. Fitting? That's an understatement if I ever heard one. Seventh and the highest of heavens that's ruling over the remaining six was right here in Mordona all this time. This isn't fitting, my friends. It's destiny. And here, obviously, we'll verse in the mist surrounding the heavens and hells. If you don't mind, I should like to hear your thoughts on them. Invested as they are in their research, it doesn't take much to stoke their passions. My apologies if this makes you uncomfortable. I 
having always traveled alone, I admittedly not too familiar with such a lively atmosphere, but I do not mislike it. By the way, the TV arrived at the Sunken Temple rather quickly. Did something happen? <laughs> well... Well, as pleasant as this has been, it's past time we return to the Annex. The paperwork for the commission isn't going to complete itself, alas. Then I shall take myself to Amphalos. There's much there that I'd like to see. And I believe I'll go for a walk nearby. Maybe it's getting a little warm in here. <laughs> I'm going to go eat Chocobo. All right, do take care now. Man, you know what? I'm getting on my fat cat. <coughs> what are they doing? I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Anyway, you just found out, like, everybody dislikes a lot of the fells. I don't. I enjoy mine. Alexis, it's pleasant, isn't it? The smells and sounds of the tavern, it makes one feel alive. Afterwards, stepping alone, breathing the cool air, I like it just as much. <coughs> While we wait developments, I shall remain here in Ruben's Hole. If any tidings are assured, I'll share them with you. It would have been accomplished without you. Yeah, now we're done.